Welcome back to Linear Algebra. Today we'll talk about the row space and rank. So what is the row space? Well, the row space is the set of all linear combinations of row vectors. So if we have a matrix A, we can define the row vectors as just the rows. So row one would be one, two, three, four, row vector two would be zero, one, two, three, and row vector three would be zero, zero, one, two. So another way we could do this is we could just take the transpose. So for instance, we have a transpose here. So our first row would become our first column. Our second row would become our second column and our third row would become our third column. And the row space is really just the column space of the transpose. So we can write row A as column of a transpose if we want. So row A is going to be a subspace of Rn, because remember the matrices are m by n. So of course, we have three row vectors, and this is a three by four matrix. Then our row vectors will have four entries, therefore it's going to be a subspace of Rn. Okay, so if two matrices A and B are row equivalent, then we can say that the row space of A is equal to the row space of B. So for instance, let's find the row space of A given that A is this matrix and B is the matrix on the right. And of course, A is going to be equivalent to B. So we can row reduce A to B. Okay, well, we see two pivot columns in B. We see, well, I guess we should say we see two pivot rows here. So we have the first row, and the second row. So we can say that the row space of A is just the set containing two row vectors. So this is going to be 1, 0, negative 1, 5. And sometimes I'll denote the row vectors with just the transpose. So I'll write them as a column vector, say transpose, and this just means row vector. So this would also be uh, 0, negative 2, 5, and negative 6 transpose. So this would be the row space of A, which is also the row space of B. Okay, so that being said, we can now introduce the concept of rank. So the rank of A is just the dimension of the column space of A. So the rank is the dimension of the column space. Okay, which means that the rank of A transpose we can write as the dimension of the column space of A transpose, which is really just the dimension of the row space. So if we're looking at the rank of A, we want the column space. If we're looking at the rank of A transpose, we want the row space. So if I have that a matrix A is reducible to a matrix B, and the dimension of row B is equal to eight, then what is the rank of A transpose? Well, the rank of A transpose is the same thing as finding the dimension of the row space of A. And of course, because row B is equivalent to row A, the dimension of row A is going to be eight. So the rank of A transpose will be eight. So that's the introduction to rank. So we have a theorem. It's called the rank theorem. It's a pretty important theorem. So given a matrix A, which is M by N, we say that the rank of A plus the dimension of the null space of A is equal to N. So really when we say the rank of A, what we mean is the dimension of the column of A. So we're saying that the column space of A plus the null space of A, we take the dimension, it equals N. So for instance, if A is three by seven, then the dimension of the column space plus the dimension of the null space will equal seven. So uh, the proof is really not technical. So really, we're just gonna define the column space and the null space, and we're gonna get an intuitive idea of why this is the case. So the column space of A is just the same thing as the number of pivot columns. So we've proven this before, we've proven that the column space, or the dimension of the column space, I should say, is just equal to the number of pivot columns. While the dimension of the null space, well, this is equal to the number of free variables. 
And of course, this is the free variables to ax is equal to zero. Okay, but what does that really mean, the number of free variables? Well, that's really just the same thing as the number of non-pivot columns. So what we see here is when we add the dimension of the column space plus the dimension of the null space, really what we're getting is the number of pivot columns plus the number of non-pivot columns. So really what we're just getting in the end when we add these two together is the number of columns. So if A is M by N, that means there's M rows and N columns. Well, then clearly the number of pivot plus the number of non-pivot is going to equal the number of total columns, which just happens to be N. So the dimension of the column space plus the dimension of the null space will equal N. Okay, so this will hold for any M by N matrix. So with this, let's test your understanding. If a null space of a seven by six matrix is five dimensional, what is the rank of A? Okay, so we have, let's see, there's gonna be six columns total here. Let's do this in pink. And the dimension of the null space is five. So we need to find the rank of A. So the rank of A plus five is equal to six. So what is the rank of A? Well, the rank of A then must be equal to one, since this is the same thing as the dimension of the column space plus the dimension of the null space. So clearly, if we have five free variables, then we're gonna have one pivot column. So uh, that is a pretty straightforward question there. Now the next one requires a little bit more thought. So if A is six by four, what's the smallest possible dimension of null A? Well, we can draw this so we can take a look here. It's gonna be six by four. So we're gonna have, let's see here. We're gonna have six rows and we're going to have four columns. So the null space is the number of non pivot columns, but here all we have are four columns. So we can have a pivot column in each row. So we can have four pivot columns. It's possible. Therefore, the smallest possible dimension of the null space could be zero because it could just happen that the dimension of the column space of A is equal to four. So this is possible in this matrix A, which is six by four. Okay, so that's a theoretical introduction to row spaces and ranks. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, there's not too many computation questions I can give you for this section other than finding linearly independent sets of row vectors, which really we've done before, so I've kind of decided to skip that, but uh, I might put it on one of my practice midterms. I don't know. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.